Alright, so here we are, day three of uh, my adventure back to flying again. Um, I'm getting lucky with weather. Um, we're it's, we're going to fly at 10 a.m. Um, it's uh, about almost 10 to 10 now. I got here early. I got my camera set up again. I'm going to keep reinforcing that if you want to um, document your training and use GoPro cameras or action cameras they got the garmins and other brands as well um, get to know those cameras well first um, make sure you have time before your flight to set them up it's my third time setting them up and this time i did it very quickly i'm also uh, interfacing with the camera with my iphone so i was able to stop and start this video from here i can see the framing so if i move my seat up i can see where i am in the frame i know that i'm going to get sebastian my flight instructor in the frame as well um and uh yeah so we got some some weather coming in but i think we're going to uh go for uh, some steep turns no we did steep turns um we're going to do some um, flight ground reference maneuvers uh, so s turns turns around a point um possibly some unusual attitude if the ceilings allow us to get to the altitude to do that um and I think we're going to do some emergency procedures, which is obviously important. So, um, yeah, so we'll see how this goes today. Uh, day three of uh, back to flying for me. See you in the air. And as I get more into this, I want to, like uh, yesterday, you're letting me learn, get my feeling back, I know, but like I'm, I'm relying on you a lot for frequencies and things. But, uh, um, yeah, we'll get there. We're just getting yeah, back into it. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to get our ATIS, which is 126.65 yep. on the COM2, so... Oh. And I one four. Notices to Airman Kennedy Airport traffic may transition to northern part of Republic Airspace. Descending from 4,000 to 2,000, all VFR aircraft are advised to maintain at or below 1,500 feet within Republic Airspace while north of the airport. Use caution for wake turbulence north of Republic Airport. Construction tower light at a service 1.8 nautical miles northeast public 244 feet MSL 140 feet AGL. IFR departure device ground control for taxi that you are IFR. Read back all runway held short instructions, runway assignments, and L2 assignments. Advise public tower on this contact you have information to Victor. Public airport information, Victor 1353, Zulu observation wind 14011, visibility 10, fuel clouds 1600, ceiling 4900, overcast temperature 4.2.1, altimeter 3021, ILS approach and use, landing and departing on night 14. Notices to Airman Kennedy Airport traffic may transition to the northern part of Republic airspace. Descending from 4,000 to 2,000, all VFR aircraft are advised to maintain at or below 1,500 feet within Republic airspace while north of the airport. Uh, has missed the altimeter setting. North of Republic airport. Construction tower light at a service, 1.8 nautical miles northeast public, 244 feet MSL, 140 feet AGL. IFR departure device, ground control for taxi, that you are IFR. Read back all runway held short instructions, runway assignments, and L2 assignments. Advise public tower on this contact, you have information, Victor. Public airport information, Victor 1353, Zulu observation wind 14011, visibility 10, fuel clouds 1600, ceiling 4900, overcast temperature 42.1, altimeter 3021, ILS approach and use, landing and departing on night 1021. Notices to Airman Kennedy Airport traffic may transition to northern part of Republic airspace. Uh, we can verify field elevation here is 80 feet, so that's all set. Maintain at or below 1,500 feet within. We got the ATIS, we're good. Check. Now we want to get ground. Construction tower light at a service 1.8 nautical miles. 126 7? 120. Oh, sorry, 120.6. Oh, the ground is always 121. Now, should I put that here? Yeah, so at the bottom there. Information Victor. We have those frequencies in there from yesterday. That was isolated. Okay. Now we flop them. There you go. All right. So why don't you go ahead and we'll plan out how we're going to get there. The hey, one four. Here, I'll just open up the four flight app, and then it won't turning off on us. All right. So we're over here, and when I get to one four, they're going to probably give us a. Uh, Taxiway right here, right? Uh, Mike, Charlie, Echo? Uh, yep, so we typically just take off from the Charlie intersection. So what they're most likely going to say is cross 1-9 or at Golf 7, Charlie, 1-4. 
at the okay. one for Charlie intersection. Uh, and I'm going to ask for a, we have Victor, I'm asking for a... You don't even have to ask for a departure because we're just going to fly straight out. Okay. Do the southeast. So we just ask for a departure? You just have to just okay. tell them we're ready to taxi to the active. We don't have to say anything about departure. Okay. Public ground, Cessna 130 Juliet Alpha, I'd like to taxi to the active with Victor. Cessna 130 Juliet Alpha, Republic ground, same position. Uh, NASA fly, sorry. Cessna 0 Juliet Alpha, not a problem, sir. Runway 14 at Charlie, intersection departure, taxi via cross runway 19 at Gulf 7, Charlie, and say direction after departure. Cross 19 at Gulf 7, Charlie to 14, Charlie intersection, southeast departure. Copy, southeast one departure on request, Cessna 0 Juliet Alpha. Everyone has their own little ways. She likes to, she kind of makes the taxi instructions a little more difficult than they need to be. Okay. But yeah, go, uh, cross one nine or golf seven, and then Charlie. One nine or golf seven, and then Charlie. Okay. And let's, uh, for taxi, our flap, light instruments set. Good. And At two seven five. Oh, vertical speed's good. Parking brake I released, and we'll do a brake check. All right, my brake. controls. I'll Your check controls. my brakes. All right, you're. My controls. Their controls. So we just need to go straight ahead to get to Golf 7. So this is, here you see the mic. This is uh, crossing the approach end of 1-9 at mic. And she wants to cross 1-9, so. Okay. At Golf 7 there. Right. Okay. That's going to be the next right, straight across. I think this moving map um, on the runways and taxiways is the uh, certain version you need for that, right? Yeah, it might be. Yeah, they entice you. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, it's like the, the best things you got to pay for. Yeah. I make this. That was correct, and we're cleared across. And we're clear to the right and clear to the left. That has even warnings, right? Yep, Just entering runway 19, 5500 feet remaining. Nice. And if you have your volume on, it'll start yelling at you. Over there's Charlie. Okay. Uh, we'll do our run up as we get a little further. You'll see to the left. There's an area where we can do our run up. Farmingdale Ground, Lear 855, Papa Tango, uh, Ventura Taxi with information. I don't know why they don't have us use Echo. I don't know if it's just like a crappy taxiway or what, but or really narrow. I'm not sure. But I've never had to go on Echo to the end. Oh. Public ground main and six located at Bravo Alpha. One able, I'd like to proceed on to runway one niner at Gulf Four. Roger, maintenance six, all. Taxi at Bravo, hold short of runway one four. Main and six, taxi via Bravo, holding short of one four. Pretty much right over by this windsock. So you'll continue past the Charlie Foxtrot sign, and oh. there's a, that area. Okay. And just point her into the wind. And as a courtesy, just make sure you leave enough room for someone else to get in as well. Okay. Sometimes people hog up the whole thing and it just, that's a real pain. Main 6, cross runway 1 4. So there's those dash lines yep. there. So we, we just want, in there. yeah, the entire aircraft on that side. You want to have room to turn around. So you can really just cut it left here. And there's another. 
There's a windsock. <laughs> Main 6, cross runway 19 or at Bravo 2. Main and 6, cross runway 19 right. at uh, Bravo 2. Uh, I'd like to be on 19 at Gulf War. Main 6, you can proceed as requested. Main and 6, proceeding Gulf 4 and 19 are holding short of 1432. Thank you. Or take up, I'll just hold the brakes. Oh, okay. Feedbacks, belts. Get over here. I'm indoors. Rolls free and correct. Come up, Aileron. Aileron. Rudder. Place all the time. I apologize. Oh, that's fine. Better. Getting a little better. Best place is keep your thumb where it is, and then uh, it's much easier to go right back to it. Electro valve is both throttle 1800.
You don't want to cross that if someone's shooting the ILS approach, especially in instrument conditions, because it can interfere with the signal. Okay. And that's the sole purpose for those lines to right. let you know that? Okay. Stay out of the way. I've had ground. Tell me to hold short of those before. And when you come to the hold short, it's good to slightly angle to the right. Or, no, yeah, good or to, the to angle to see the traffic. The approach, right? Especially at uncontrolled fields. So we got a jet coming in now. Oh. And might as well get that before takeoff lineup done. Okay. And switch to tower. Lights are good. Or next. I'm just going to put tower on because they might try and talk to us. On my one four, clear to land. And sponder on altitude. Clear to land number two, eight zero. Full rich. Runway assignment verified. Windows closed. All good over here. Okay. Am I good on the lights? Uh, I no, all lights on besides taxi light. Okay. Just to give yourself some visibility on the runway. Sure. Like a falcon. I make the call? Yep. Uh, do I need to be specific? One, four? Just, you can just say uh, Republic Tower, system 130, Joe Alpha holding short yeah, one four at Charlie. Charlie. Falcon 5 Delta Mighty. So the sign 3214 means 32 is going this way, 14 is going this way. Right. Turn left Delta 1, taxi shelter via Delta Golf, this frequency, Falcon 5 Delta Mike. Okay, Delta 1, shelter via Delta Golf, stay with you, 75 Delta Mike. Thank you. Seth 130 Juliet Alpha, Republic Tower, hold short, runway 14. Holding short of 14, 130 Juliet Alpha. Something about the combination of numbers with Juliet, it makes uh, slur the Juliet. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, it's weird. Always like drooling up. Put in Alpha. Do you see these, flicker? see these flicker once in a while? Just like. Yeah, so, yeah, so when you put it down, it's a little dimmer. So that, it's because that one fuel tank is okay. the reading. Okay, it's kind of corresponding with that. All right. right, but we checked it visually and we have plenty of fuel. We've okay. got over 20 gallons in each. As we fill these things up so much that the arm just wears out. It is accurate, it's just intermittent. Checklist. So basically, the climb checklist is going to be full power, turn the landing light off, and flaps up if we had flaps in. Okay. And verify mixture ridge, and then cruise, just bring it to cruise power, trim it out. Uh, I'll need to make sure. And verify the compass. In one three zero one six. And it's never a bad idea to have it turn to emergency procedures. Okay. okay. Just in case you need it, then you don't have to sit there flipping through when time is crucial. And the most, and the most critical one, of course, for time is this one. Yep, the engine failure. But this, is this is obviously something that you need. You want ingrained in your right. Yep. So. 
pitch, pitch the 68, I have like a flow I do. Fuel's on book, you'll shut off out of it, make sure full rich. Then you just go over, make sure you can put the fuel pump on, make sure the master's on, and make sure the keys are on both magnetos. So it's just kind of like a reverse L. Oh, Fusion Alpha, only one four challenge section, line up and wait. Line up and wait, zero Julian Alpha. Bonanza, zero Yankee Zoo, turn right Bravo, taxi line, take this frequency. Hey, turning Gun Bravo, staying with you, 8 0 Yankee Zoo. Uh, zero Julian Alpha, southeast bound approved, only one four challenge section, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, zero Julian Alpha. Down, yeah. So we level the wings. Well, first, 
about idle, level of wings, nose up. So it's good to just see the trend of the airspeed. So if the airspeed is increasing, we're likely nose down. If the airspeed is decreasing, we're likely nose up. Because uh, when we have an unusual attitude, sometimes the gyros can get thrown out of whack. So you can't always trust the attitude indicator in that situation. So let's make sure we call New York before we get too close to the Charlie there. So what we can do is just start turning outbound. And you can switch to New York. Now we're right over the twin span now. New York approach, that's the 130 Juliet Alpha. 130 Juliet Alpha, New York. Zero Juliet Alpha is twin span bridge. We're requesting traffic advisory South Practice area. 130 Juliet Alpha, squawk 4374. 4374, 0 Juliet Alpha. That's it. And we're approaching 3500. 130 Juliet Alpha, contact outcome to 3015. 3015 is your drop up. Let's put 3015. Alright, and descend. This guy came out of nowhere. Yeah, wow. Couldn't see those at all, actually. Bring it back down to three. So we'll save unusual attitudes for another day because yeah, I like to have more altitude for that. Okay. Uh, so what we can do is do you see the lighthouse right there, the black and white one? Yep, Fire Island uh, Lighthouse. Yep, so yep. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do turns around the point around the lighthouse. So we'll bring it down to a thousand. All right, descending to a thousand and going toward the lighthouse. So for ground reference maneuvers, we want to be between 600 and 1200 feet, so thousands, an easy number to stay at. You can also turn the landing light off.
are at 140 at the ground, just over right. at Farmingdale. 3,000 feet. Oh, that would mean we're getting 180. Right. right. So we have. I like to put the heading bug there so we can visualize it. So we're kind of getting pushed closer to it. The winds aren't too strong today. So this is a good distance. And when you're looking inside, all you really got to look at is the uh, altimeter and coordination. Actually, why don't we continue out towards the 
bridge. Since the wind is sort of out of the south east, uh, it'll be a little bit better to use the bridge. Because you want the line you're flying best turns around uh, to be parallel to the wind. So, Because then on one side you'll be pushed away from it, and on one side you're being pushed towards it. Because if you have like an east-west wind and you're working on an east-west line, there's not really much correction you have to do. It's just okay. going to be really wide. S turns are really shallow. S turns, that's the only thing. So that bridge will be good. This one here? Yep. Okay. So I'll kind of come like that. And we're just going to keep an eye out for traffic because that's like straight out of, of people take off one floor. They just fly straight. And that's pretty much where they end up. But we're down at 1,000 feet, so... 22. So just make sure you note that blinking tower. So let's stay to the right of that at all times. That tower. Oh, okay. And then, uh, so that bridge kind of continues as a road. We'll do the S turns there. So we'll come over on the base, we'll yep. cross here on the base side. And then we'll do right okay. turns around that bridge. Right turn. A right turn and then a left and then turn. Right turn. 384, when able to direct to the Rhymes intersection, descend to 4,000. And we're entering on the downwind with the wind behind us now. I just keep it at 1,000.
climb us up to 2,500 feet and head down. Let's just make sure we line this up before anything. Line one up, I'm sorry. Uh, DG, line up oh. with the mega compass. Over time, it'll tend to wander. There you go. And you want me to climb to 2,500 yeah. and head? Climb 2,500, head uh, 120 heading. 120, up to 2,500. Half the year, this whole island's pretty much empty. And the summer is packed all the time. A fun place. Yeah. Have you been to the Jones Beach Air Show? Yeah. A yeah. couple, several times. That's awesome. Yeah, I've done my, uh, so I have a nice long 70 to 200 with an extender lens, so I've got some nice shots. Nice, shots. very nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. I've, we've watched it from the beach and we've watched it from the boat. Oh, that's awesome. Are you allowed to take your boat out under the air show? You are. That's cool. Yeah. We stayed in uh, Zach's Bay, which is that little bay right by Jones Beach. Very cool. Uh, yes. Yeah, that'd be fun to be on the boat. Yeah. I got a, such a cool, there's a fishing, I, I mean, that tell this uh, fishing captain, uh, I have a shot of Sean Tucker, like, coming over his, and everybody's looking up. Wow. Like, you could advertise your boat for the, for the air show with this photo. Yeah, that's true. A really good day to go is Friday. It's the rehearsal, but um, it's just, it's the full show, and it's much less crowded. I'll probably do that. Yeah. It's fun to be at the field, too. Uh, like, talking oh, to yeah. the Blue Angels, and yep. checking out all those planes and stuff like that. All right, so let's pull that power to idle. And let's say we have an engine failure. All right, engine failure. We want to pitch S glide. While we're doing that, we're going to go to North Flow. Both. Cut off. The rich. All right, where are we putting her down? Now we're looking and back in the master. And I'm. We've got the beach as a background, a backup. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's pitch to that 68 knots. Tripping out so that we don't really have to think about it too much. Uh, let's go with... Uh, long road looks pretty good. Yeah. I don't see any vehicles on it. Oh, that's a good one. So we are at uh, 2300. We have plenty of altitude. Uh, but we don't want to drift too far away. All right, so basically just kind of circle above it. Now, once we once we know we've made our decision and we've got, you know, we don't have the distance as an issue, then the airspeed becomes less critical to be right because that. Right, we know we're going to make the field. Right, uh, it's, but it is all about airspeed management. So we have no yep. power. We only have gravity helping us out here. Um, so, so what I want to see next time is. For right away, pitch to 68 and find the landing spot. Then try and diagnose it. Okay. Uh, just basically pitch for 68, go straight towards where you're going to plan to land. Then go through the flow. So we have fuels on both, fuel shutoff valve in, mixture rich. We come over and let's ship. You can turn the fuel pump on um, in actual emergency and make sure the master's on and make sure the key is switched to both. Okay. Now that we have our landing distance, I mean our landing site, and we have our pitch for 68, we can go ahead and pull the checklist out to verify, try some restart procedures. Do you want me to do that? Oh, let's see. Jetblue 1068, New York Approach, thank you. The altimeter is 3 Now transponder 7700. Right, so we would, we would file an emergency and we would tell New York Approach we have an engine failure. And we're going to put it down on this road here by Robert Moses. Okay. Thank you, and you can do the But now, what we did is sort of a restart procedure, but now... Right, and what we could do is just verify that we got everything. Okay. So just read out loud, so airspeed's okay, good, landing right, we have... Fuels on both, shut off valve in, mixture rich, fuel pump on. Okay. Mission. Um, 
Yeah, so I would say now here I am at 1100. Are you going to land going this way or are you going to land going this way? Um, it'd be better to land this way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we want to touch down at the slowest speed so okay. we're going to fly into the wind. So what we can even do is kind of set it up so we'll land down there. Yeah. And if there were a vehicle on either the left or the right side of the road, we would just pick the other one. Okay. So there would be no... Now this is almost like we're setting up to get on a base. Right. I don't want to have to turn too tight. Right. Yeah, you don't want to be more than 30 degrees of bank. All right, very good. You can go ahead and recover. So we're just going to add full power. And we know our obstacle alert system works. Okay. And so remember, you're going to need forward pressure on those controls because we have so much nose up trim. That good job recognizing that right away. And that's uh, that's what's called a trim elevator trim stall. And if you have it trimmed nose up a lot, yeah. you add full power. Eight, eight, the nose will come right up, yeah. and you have to be very mindful of that because then you can just put yourself right into a power on stall. Yeah, I felt that right away. All right, let's bring it up back to 1500 eastbound. 1500 eastbound. Alright. Uh, so I want you to get us back to Farmingdale for touch and goes. Alright. So actually we'll do stop and goes. That means we're gonna go to a full stop on the runway okay. and then depart. Alright, back to Farmingdale and let's get our ATIS. Yep, so there's no rush to turn right towards it. We have plenty of time to get the ATIS as necessary. 126. Now, we're listening to approach still, so... Uh, we just want to monitor, so if we press the mic button, that means we'll talk on it, but if we press the top one, it's just monitoring. So, there you go. Kennedy Airport traffic may transition the northern part of Pulse Airspace, sending from 4000 to 2000. All VFR aircraft are maintained at or below 1500 within our public airspace. Thank you. Airport, use caution for wake turbulence north of Pulse Airport. This is Jam Instruction Carolina Service, 1.8 miles northeast, roughly 244 feet MSL, 140 feet AGL. Okay. Five fire and five ground control tags, the two are IFR, read back all runway, hold short instructions, read back all runway assignments, read back all altitude assignments. Advise from the town and just contact your information, whiskey. Whiskey, and there's the landing one for. Okay. That's all I need, right? Uh, altimeter. Oh, one one zero at one two, visibility one zero, sky condition two clouds, 2,400. Uh, we'd like to request stop and goes with 
pretty much fly right towards the landfill. And there's one reporting point around here I'm not fond of. But it's called Belmont Lake. And so there's a water tower right there. The one that's closest to us. Yeah. And there's a little lake right before it. That's called Belmont Lake. Yeah. Um, I think it's an awful reporting point because there's a lake there, there's a lake there, there's a lake there. But that's the one they're referring to if they say Belmont Lake. Sometimes they'll have you go to Belmont Lake and then towards the field just okay. for traffic. But um, Right off the Southern State Parkway. Right. Yeah. And you, knew, you know it's Belmont Lake because there's a little island in it on the north side. This is 1432 right here, right? Yes. Okay. So the easiest way to remember is that big white hangar yeah. is at the uh, approach of 19. Okay. That's where Nassau Flyers is. So we want to get down to pattern altitude. And Correct. And we want to do our pre-landing checklist. Fuels bold, pictures rich, seat belts. Landing light. Yep. Make sure we got air in the tires. So that's that Belmont Lake. You see the little island in oh, it? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's not that prominent compared it's not. with the other. I mean, landfill is super easy to see. Yeah. shut all the way. Yeah, it's a little cold, but I'm cool. I mean, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool, but it's cool. <laughs> yeah, the weather's already starting to come down. See over there? Oh, yeah. Pressure, 
um, just to for air braking, and we're going to apply brakes. Okay. We don't have to apply max brakes, and just sort of simulate. Okay. We'll say our obstacle is roughly the road area, or? Yeah. Okay. We'll try and put it down right there on the threshold at the numbers. And those last notch of flaps will help you. Especially since it's raining, we don't want to apply full brakes because we don't want to slide around or skip at all. Wind 130, Niner. So we can stop. I was crossing, I was crossing my wires in my head a little, thinking short field. Short field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're doing short field. All right, so hold full brakes. Change it to 10 degrees of flaps. Oh, 10. Right, and then to look at them. Okay. So full full brakes and then full power. Don't release the brakes until the engine's wound up. Okay. So we're doing a short field takeoff. Right. All right. We're gonna rotate it. 55 still, but we're gonna climb out at 65. Power is good. All right. Release brakes. I really need that right rudder. And where when are we rotating? Uh, same 55 knots, okay. and then we're gonna climb out at 65 knots. Until we're above our obstacle. We are now, then we'll pitch for 74 knots, V1, because we want the airspeed to come up a bit, and then we'll put the flaps up. Airspeed's building, good rate of climb. Yeah, with this rain and that crappy visibility over there, I'm glad we did the touch and goes after. Yeah. So that we're already at the airport. And we're making right traffic. Correct. Keep 
that runway and start that turn. Regular landing, or we're gonna do another short. short. Same thing. Let's put it right down on the numbers. All right. Because for a short field, naturally you want to use the most as you can. Right. One three zero at seven. Because a potential threat is running off the end. So. Seven hundred feet now. Testing. On the high side, so we'll yep, so getting those back. flaps in ASAP. So the nose is still pointed a little to the left, so we can bring that right rudder in to point it to the straight down the runway. So add a little bit of power so you don't land before the threshold. Beautiful. Short field, so we want to get break on. Uh, just nice and easy. We have plenty of runway and okay. it's wet. Want to fly back pressure as you're stopping? Yep, because it just helps the uh, the more air surface that's showing, the slower we'll get. Laps for ten. Yep. Short field, take off, full power. Good. Pressure's good. Okay, got it. 
about it.
Oh yeah, that's a NASA flyer. See your right? Cessna 60 Victor makes right traffic, runway 14, clear for takeoff. Right traffic, uh, oh, we're going to cross here. Victor? Okay. Uh, we're clear to cross one nine. I was supposed to have two cross countries with students today. That's not happening. Oh. Yeah. four one six zero zero. Public tower. Hold short. Runway one four. Also one four six zero zero. Right, just straight ahead. That yeah, will make a left when we're clear. Okay. All right. That's the, uh, the threshold. <laughs> more and more comfortable with the radios for sure I can tell yeah it's a matter of I'm hearing the calls yeah, too oh, yeah, there you go. Thank you. yeah it's uh, again we just completed the third flight I uh, just had my post-flight briefing with Sebastian to discuss the flying um, as you could see we just got uh, the flight in weather's gone ceiling it's starting to rain actually the ceilings started coming down um, Sebastian made a good choice of uh, doing the, the 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 ground reference maneuvers out over the over the South Shore over by Robert Moses uh, Fire Island area. Um, we did some turns around a point, S turns, and then we came back and did some pattern work, short short field uh, takeoff and landings. We did some stop and goes. Um, yeah, so it's it's starting to come back. Everything's um, you know still want to get still need to hear those radio calls a little bit better, but uh, it's just handling the planes feeling good oh and we did one one emergency procedure um engine failure which i de definitely want to work on just being like you know very precise with that and just going through the checklist very very second nature i don't want to have to think about it um while i am trying to um pitch for best angle of glide and look for a, a emergency landing spot so yeah good another good uh good day Looks like weather's gonna be pretty bad tomorrow, so I don't know if I'm gonna get my fourth one in tomorrow, but um, uh, hopefully Thursday, if not. Greetings, uh, today is, what is today? Wednesday. Um, today is the day I was supposed to have my, um, my fourth lesson, <clears throat> or my fourth uh, time back up um, to, toward my recurrency. Weather was really bad. Sebastian and I canceled yesterday uh, no, with the forecast being clearly low IFR and you could see outside right now um, that was a good choice. Um, so I just wanted to like kind of let you know what I'm doing today. I'm I'm starting to edit the videos. I don't want to get too hung up um, on that. Oops, my camera's falling a little here. Oh, sorry. I don't want to get too hung up on the The whole editing process i don't want it to rob me of my time and my my mental energy um and i i, I kind of keep repeating that but it's it's important because there's so much with the flying that i have to be concentrating on but i do really want to capture this moment um of of getting back um like i had said i i don't know of many youtube channels out there that are uh, that have tracked somebody who's been out of the out of the saddle for as long as I've been um, and I'm gonna you know getting that first uh, time up was very important because that was that was my first time in almost 17 years so I really wanted to capture my expression my feeling my mood and I also want you to see 
how and myself see how quickly I go from day one of feeling quite nervous and uneasy to comfortable and it's it's already happening after after two lessons I, and my third lesson I felt felt great um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, this is what I wanted to show you I'm just working with Adobe Premiere Pro uh, video editing software I knew very little about it I'm kind of learning on the fly I uh, purchased a course through uh, Creative Live, um, Abba Shapiro, um, his kind of boot camp, and I, I didn't spend, I didn't watch the whole thing, I've been watching bits and pieces, but multi-cam editing is actually something that's huge, um, it allows you to take multiple cameras, um, and once, uh, unfortunately the automated version of doing that where it syncs up the audio was not working for me. Um, I feel like that the reason that's not happening is probably because one of the audio's tracks is from the headset and the other is straight into the camera, so maybe that's throwing it off. But it caused me to do a lot of tedious uh, manual syncing. But once that happened, then it's a matter of this interface here. You go, you're going basically, uh, you have your main window, which is like your active panel, and here's my three cameras. Um, and I'm just basically, as I play, three foot descent. I mean, this is only a two hundred foot descent. I just have to go here and switch, and now this becomes my live camera, and it's that simple. And that becomes the the edited track, if that's the right terminology. And I'm just bringing this up because um, I'm trying to do, kill two birds with one stone. Because I, for me to do this, I have to watch the entire video. Um, if I'm going to go through the effort of watching the video with, with the audio and everything, I might as well use it for editing purposes to, to do the camera switches and then also use it for my own learning purposes so that I can listen to the video. I have my, um, my checklist with me. So like, I'm kind of going through that and I'm getting, I'm getting, um, more experience, um, exposure without paying for a Hobbs meter to be running. So I just thought I'd point that out. Um, as I come up with little nuggets that I feel are helping me, I, I'll point them out.